Hi everyone and welcome back. Uh, welcome to my YouTube channel and here in this playlist, playlist we are talking about uh, Swiggy clone application and we have covered a lot of content. Now in this video we are going to talk about cart service and the order service. In the previous video we worked on the, the integration side. We were able to show the restaurant landing page. We were able to fetch the restaurant and the dish menu items and the categorization we were able to categorize it. Uh, see the same way as the swiggy app currently showing on the live app like if you go to the swiggy.com you select a particular dish menu items uh, and then you go to the restaurant landing page the, the layout and the look and feel looks like similar next our objective is uh, after the landing page you should be able to add the items to the cart so this is our application swiggy clone app and swiggy app we can start our application and I can just show you also how all the things are working right now. So next thing we are going to do is the cart service. So you will start adding the items to the cart. Right. Okay. Uh, so what all things you need while you so we need to design the cart service. This is going to be in the, the next JS uh, simple rest APIs which will just do the simple CRUD operation. Because what happens is, let's say you are logged in and you start adding things to the cart, and but you didn't order, right? But those data should have been stored somewhere. So when you come back on the website, you should be able to see, okay, those list of items you added in the cart, but you didn't order, but still those are there. So if you remember what we have done is, uh, if I just try to show you, this is our landing page and here now, when you click on plus minus plus minus what will happen is we would be able to show we will be able to add these items to the cart so currently the cart is empty but when you start adding here plus minus what we will do is we will start adding things in our cart so there comes the cost this shopping cart service sorry what i'm speaking this is a cart service so this would be able to store our restaurant id I mean this simple cart service is common across all the platform either it's e-commerce or either it's retail what the objective is uh, it should store whatever you have added in the cart the quantity the item IDs and the whole JSON object and this is this is this is going to be the JSON object this is what you need to store and then uh, user ID because you are the user who is adding this attributes so i can just this is is actually it's an array object based on the number of items you are adding restaurant id user id and then created that and all these uh, other attributes okay restaurant id dish id and so these are, are the items you are adding to the cart and inside this json object you will have everything you have added inside a card the quantity the price the whole json object about a dish menu item and you can add a multiple dish menu items with a different different quantity okay so this is a simple crud operation here and currently we don't have a, any user service because we are just doing all uh, integration with the firebase and we really don't have any service which is storing a user metadata whatever we are getting we are getting only from firebase so here i am just going to create a simple user service but the objective of the user service is only to store user metadata let's say user addresses because that we do currently we don't have any place where we can just store the user addresses and user address is important thing till the delivery because if we because we can have a, a user can have multiple addresses and while placing the order he will choose one particular address record i mean one particular address out of multiple and that address needs to be provided to the delivery partner so inside we can just have a you can say this is a user preference service not user service from user service you will start thinking that we are writing authentication authorization or user management no it's only a user preference service that can store two things in from the platform your user preference it can store user preference 
and it can store the all the different addresses of a user these are the things which we should be able to store using this service and the card service is the important one which we are building so let's get ready what we need to do here is i created a copy of the restaurant service as a user service here we need to just get rid of things controller okay we don't need all these controllers okay dto we don't need all the dto we are just going to have a simple address dto entity controller is empty and then we have these services which we can get rid of okay this is going to be a simple address dto so we won't spend much time here this is our address entity which is placed here so this is a user address entity and we don't have a relationship with the user this user id is of type string which we can have here okay because this address belongs to some user so here we are going to have a user id because only a logged in user can add an address and this is of type uui okay user id is not a uuid in the firebase it's a varchar default is null it's a you can say it's a loose foreign key but we don't have a user table in our system then we can have a user dto user request and user response i already have created this uh, uh, this service this entity and crud operation so i'm just using that update user permission dto we are not using <coughs> okay so this is address uh, dto and then we have a service address controller and a service so controller is just a crud operation what it contains is simply okay create address update address and delete address so i will just remove these things user address service first let's add a user address service inside our services and what the user address service will give us so let me just clean up the imports and then we will add it user entity we don't have we just have a user address entity so let's import them import all the missing things user repo we don't have here we are going to pass user underscore id that will be coming from user metadata api user dot uid okay fetch all address api user dot uid user address repo oh why it is complaining object literal specify okay it should not be user it should be simply user id where user id equal to api user dot id api user dot uid okay so we are able to fix these things config module so we need to inject the config module no we don't need a logger also simple repository module we need do we have the logger package let me check i think we don't have the logger package or we have it okay we can use the logger package in our this service so we are inside a address service i can import the logger from the each logger no it should be from the swiggy okay so our service now our entity is clear now we need to go to the controller add all missing imports let's see access token guard so it should be firebase auth guard which we are getting from our package auth package you can see we are getting from swiggy auth package user user metadata so this is address and the root route is api tag is addresses 
so it's like a user preference now what are, what other controller you can add user preference controller user preference service where based on the user id we can set the preferences maybe like okay you want some layout you want some notifications user notification you can disable globally or uh, your notification preferences and uh, if you want to store some some of your favorites right some favorite restaurant and favorite dish menu items that also we can store inside the preferences like okay your favorite uh, restaurants a json b column where you are just passing only the restaurant ids so all those stuff we can have another controller like another table user preference entity uh user preference user preference entity okay preference there is a typo So this is user preference entity and it's not going to have those many columns okay it will have same like snooze notification this is user preference if user wants to snooze all the global notifications we can just make it true and false for this particular user and we won't be sending any uh, notification to this user okay similarly there can be an other type of uh, global settings from the the profile settings you can set all those parameters like uh, information sharing lots of global settings you can add global preference you can add for the user profile and here we are going to have a user id okay these preference belongs to this particular user id and then further you can create a simple crud operation around it for now we are not discussing about it here let's change the packages and definition this is user so we can call user preference <coughs> and do we have this coming up here inside application okay this is user preference so we need to change the port and couple of things and the database also because currently we are we are using restaurant api that's not correct we'll go to our docker compose and we will change some stuff so this is the restaurant service right there will be another container we are spinning up postgres user is uh, still fine user api user api testing Five four three five. So let's call five four three eight, or five four three three is the host port and container port is three two. Docker compose. This is Postgres dot user. Postgres user. So if I do Docker compose up, I will see another container up and running. That's the first thing we will do. Docker compose up. So we got another database that database we should be able to connect this is a user api and that is on 5433 port so inside our user service go to env this is user api on 5433 port okay so each restaurant and this is running on let's say 3004 port and i think we are not getting the port from process.env here so i will just set it 3004 okay what else app service app module app controller domain module okay we have lots of things which we don't need right now we will just remove get rid of all of these so we have only one address address entity user address entity and 
we don't have anything else so this is user address entity a single database table here we are going to have a user address controller and then user address service so simple uh, our same uh, application we converted into this one and let's see if there is any error is coming okay user address you can see this table has been created because typo rm sync is there it is synchronizing the entities based on the it, it is synchronizing the database table based on the entity and now we can check uh, the service 3004 simple address create address fetch there may be another api put and delete that also we can create why should we wait for that okay address controller so this is get and post similarly we can have put and delete put address i want to update this particular address and this is I want to delete this particular address ID. <clears throat> so this is create address DTO. Instead of that, there will be a param. We are going to pass for the delete. First of all, add all missing imports. This is update address. Based on ID, this is delete address. delete user address and then we will just pass param <clears throat> so in this dto we are going to pass the id so ta -ta -ta, i can create an id export class user address by id DTO, this is a class and it's going to have ID as a property which we are passing. So this is ID of uh, type is UUID. This is of type string. So this is ID. And obviously this is UUID. So user address by ID DTO, this is we are going to use inside our controller. This is the delete. And similarly, here we are going to pass two things, param, body and the user, because this is update. So let's import this. Add all missing imports and here we are going to pass param and the user. Param is of type this, so we will create a delete method. Here it is an update method, so we are passing body, user, param or maybe param user body param user body and this is our attribute for the update which is inside our service so here we can create a sync update here we are passing three arguments okay uh, the order is param user body so this is param user and then body first argument second argument and third argument and here we will import the definition of this dto okay now what we are going to do this is update so if you look at the create here we are going to pass the id okay const id of this param this is the address we are going to update first of all we can validate the authorization that are you the the one who is really the owner of this user owner of this address await this dot validate authorization and what it will do is you will pass param and okay param and your own user id user object and this is going to return address entity here we can just define this method 
async validate authorization that takes two argument one is param and user so these are the two argument we can first get the id and then we will just check okay is the address really exist with this id const address equal to await this dot user address repo dot find dot find one so we can just pass where close right if the address is there right if address is not there then we can just throw not found exception otherwise we are good but we, we have to check this address dot user id oh where is the address dot user id that should be equal equal to the the user we are passing user uid if this is not equal equal to that then also we need to throw unauthorized exception throw new unauthorized exception otherwise we are good we can just return the address we have received so this is simple validate authorization right so let's say if we got the address then we just need to update the address this dot okay we got the address object return this dot user address repo dot save okay here we are saving it so we will just pass the existing payload existing address object which is this and the body that's it it will update it because we are passing the currently created object so this is update and similarly we can do delete inside delete we don't need a body and what delete will do is await validate authorization we will still do this and then we will do delete and we will pass the address object which we want to delete okay so i think this takes id address dot id okay this is what the, the id we wanted to delete and why it is complaining we are not returning anything from the delete so let's see uh, this is get this is delete here it is going to do no content return dot delete will return nothing so it's no content this is update so it will do okay we can return the updated address object okay so this is a simple address entity and i can see thing that uh, these are our addresses updated right users addresses and the id okay it so here what we are doing is let's make this address uh, plural so it looks uh, more better so address addresses post post and put delete and get okay and this is our simple swagger right so this is just a user preference api we will just update the swagger config it is saying it is uh restaurant api it's not like that so what we will do is it is coming from the swagger config which is this so it's a user user preference api api spec and now this is simple right so this is user preference api now we can start working on our cart apis and here so this is our second microservice second rest apis you can say that is running on 3004 that is already running right and the api specs looks like api v1 restaurant right and we also have the restaurant api running somewhere that is running on 3000 i guess let me check okay 3000 and 3004 i mean 
while doing this local setup you can just take care of this the port mapping on which port what is running you can just change it and here we used to have this proxy right default config so if you want to use it this is fine you can use it what it is saying is we can just have a simple mapping of okay when you are hitting api v1 restaurant it is going to hit the swiggy microservice 3000 port okay this swiggy microservice is the alias we have created so this is the proxy pass we have created now similarly we can also create a uh, other routings on top of that okay i haven't done this in the next config update since a long time api v1 user so this would be user microservice then we can do it for the cart api v1 cart so here we can hit the cart microservice so the uh, so what is the advantage of it you will be just hitting only local host 80 and whatever the request is coming local host api v1 restaurant it will take you to the restaurant service api v1 user it will take you to the user preference api v1 cart it will take you to the cart service and inside the restaurant we have api v1 dishes also that is again same on the restaurant service but that's a different root path right so we need to add that also swiggy service so when you run this uh, so what do we have is this is a proxy we can actually create a container file for it and once you run it inside a container right then this nginx proxy will run on different container and if you see here this swiggy microservice these are the internal container names so if you just run this proxy inside the same docker compose file and spin up that as a container then when your front end container hit the local host then this is actually going to hit the microservice swiggy microservice or restaurant service we will just change it restaurant this is again a restaurant i mean the name of the container and then this is your user that is just to explain you why we have this nginx but for now we are just hitting these different different ports because we were having only one service but now we may need to use this because now we are serving we are increasing services right now the next thing we are going to add is a card service so i will just create a copy of user service and i will just say we'll call it as a card service and let's populate our docker compose with the database and a different postgres container postgres cart and then docker compose override here we can have postgres cart it's also going to have i think one database table but that depends on the use case what you are building 5432 is the port and then here the this is the cart api cart api testing okay and this is the cart api data this is user api data Here we will do the volume mapping. So these containers will map the volume to the host, and we should be able to save our data on the host machine even if the container dies. Start API data, user API data, restaurant API data, and we can do Docker compose up. I think somewhere we are running. I can just say again Docker compose up it will just uh, spin up another container and if you see we now have three containers on this okay full stack uh, postgres the name is user cart and the restaurant three containers are running on different different port so what we will do now is we have this uh, restaurant service cart service i will just update the env this is the cart api and this is 5432 because it's like a same application 
right what we need to change is the domain uh, the entities so here instead of address we need to use this as a cart and then we will create a cart controller cart service cart dto cart entity and the business logic how the cart apis should behave whenever you are hitting the request of adding items to the cart removing items from the cart and all these sort of apis which we need for the cart service okay so now let's see what we need for the cart api so uh, we are using this cart service inside apps and let's see the package json okay this is cart apis cart service and the basic we will just update the basic configurations and also we need a controller dto entity and service I mean this card service is really not a big need we are just uh, using it so that we can store the the card items which user has added before placing the order sometimes what happens is user reloads the page and all the card menu items gone right so what happens is this card service will just store those data temporarily so that uh, once user added those in the cart and reload the page or come back again he or she could see the same uh, car menu items the restaurant menu items added in the cart okay so what we are going to do is we are going to create a simple controller so user address controller we can just change this to cart address controller i mean cart controller so i will just replace this with the controller here what we are going to do is i will just update few things inside this so we are going to have a cart service auth guard logger we can just see so first of all do the pnpm install at the root so we'll get all the the packages added and here we are going to create a cart service so this is the cart controller what it is doing is it is creating this uh, firebase auth card we need to protect this api user metadata and let's just import add all missing imports so these apis are protected firebase auth guard we have got it what these apis are get put post delete right if you see what this api is i'm just copy pasting it because these crud operations we have created many times in the whole uh this swiggy clone app so this is created uh what it is doing add menu items to the cart so our root route is api v1 cart post means we are adding the items to the cart so we need to check okay this is our structure looks like here we need to pass the dish menu json object so let's say you added a same uh, you added one menu item then you added another menu item a uh, multiple menu item so we need to keep checking that we should not be adding a duplicate menu items again and again so from the front end we are going to get this dishes as a json object and here you might be ordering a multiple items uh, like the two items for a particular food menu item so that we need to track and uh, the restaurant id and the user id we can get from the token okay this is the controller and then we need an entity so what entity looks like is this is the cart entity so this is our cart controller Similarly, I will create uh, this cart entity. I'll just delete this one and change this to the cart entity. And what it will contain is this is cart entity, and what it is having is the ID, user ID, who is adding the items to the cart, restaurant ID, menu item object this is going to be a json object and the count count should be a part of menu items because you might be adding the multiple items count is not something which we should be having outside so user id restaurant id and menu item json object that's the only thing we need and then a menu item body dto so here we are going to have this cart dto what card DTO will contain is 
all the properties of what we are submitting so here we have these uh, okay so let's see our restaurant service in the restaurant service we are adding a food menu items right uh, if you see restaurant DTO restaurant this DTO these properties we are going to use a lot so what these properties are like uh, cuisine type meal type food type and all so I will just copy this DTO and uh, will reuse stuff from this Okay, go to our cart service either we can just put that is in, inside the typings or we can just copy paste it the types here and then we have some enum types and all if you want like what you can do is these are the common types right so you can put these enums on this typings package so this is filter type at least these we can add inside our typings package so that these enums are available universally everywhere so we can go to the packages types src index.js this is role and this is uh, dish dot ts dish menu dot ts and then export these properties through the index.ts export everything from this menu item so we'll build this package and this package it will be available inside our restaurant service if we see the package JSON here we should be using the the typings types we can see so once we do the build first we will build this package so inside this we have a types let's just build this and we can also build this service so now we have a auth service cart preference there is nothing like cart preference it's not refreshed properly so let's see swiggy user swiggy app this is react app this is auth service i mean this is showing some random wrong names Art preference. Let's say if I build this, cannot find project. That's what I'm saying. So it needs to get refreshed. Can I remove it. Okay, it's fine. So what we will do is we'll go to apps, art service, npm run. okay so what we can do is cart service go to the package json here the package json name is uh, this is restaurant service this is cart service this should be the this is the namespace this is the name of the application right the same application name should be available here i will try to refresh it this is my packages okay this is my cart service and I will try to build this from the root it is building it is just building all the dependent packages and then it will build itself that's good now the typing should be available inside the card service app DTO so we can import these things okay cuisine type We cannot find so what we will do is I will try to manually import all of these import all of these from Wiggy types so here I will import meal type okay what is uh, cuisine type and what are the attributes we have meal type food type okay this is how we can import the the types from the common reusable package so this can be used across any application or the packages okay and what is the DTO here so here it is menu item body DTO so we have it 
menu item body dto okay it has all the properties so what do we need a name okay what it is first of all it is an array of uh, the menu items which we are going to store inside a json so here we have id of the dish menu item the name description the cuisine type meal type food type category and then we also need one more property the price price for an individual item and how many items you are adding for this right count count like okay number of items which you are adding inside a card so let's say if i'm adding three four then we will just multiply this with the price and the thumbnails that's it so this is our dto inside entity we are importing it okay these are the properties which we are adding so it is we need our types menu item what are we using menu item by the way we are not using anywhere so let me remove this line okay so we have a dto we have a controller inside controller we have lots of things right create menu item dto and all so that we will try to import so create a cart menu item body dto what it contains is a simple json object okay so here it contains a restaurant id because we are creating cart right so it contains a restaurant id and then the menu item array object okay this is just an object so what we are doing allowing only one items to be added from the the ui so we, we you can send a multiple you can send a multiple calls like when you are adding an, a single item then you keep adding this so menu item is an object which contains all these properties so this count okay so how we should design this so cuisine type meal type food type price thumbnails okay so inside our service what we are going to do is let's say you are creating a cuisine right create cre you are creating or adding something inside a card so either we need to increase this count from the api side right or we will allow you to send these uh, food menu items from the front end here this will also have a count okay count is let's say the one this is menu item body dto which contains the count also there food menu item and count so what our data will store is we will, we will just have only one record at a time for a user okay inside the card table because this is json object and we keep adding the new menu item wherever you click on add to cart add to cart add to cart because you will have a same restaurant id and you can add a multiple items from the same restaurant inside a cart so we will keep adding them so this is a cart controller we'll just import this uh, dto this is update menu item dto and then this is firebase auth guard so this is our simple api right now we need to write our service so this cart service will have what simple logic so i will try to write it from the scratch so this is our cart service so what do we have inside our cart service so let's say i will just remove the existing code so inside cart service we have imported auth guard user metadata logger cart entity we will import the cart entity is there this is coming from swiggy package same it is coming from the swiggy package we are not using config service anywhere we will just remove them okay now the methods so inside a cart service we have export class cart service here we are going to create a cart async create cart menu item and i'm doing some cool copy paste because same crud operations we have written many times and i don't want to waste your precious time if you are watching this so we are just going to get the current logged in user who is adding this and this is the payload 
and simply you are passing the restaurant id and json object so how we will uh, how we are going to store it inside a table so this is our simple table which has a restaurant id and menu item json object so first we will just get if there is an existing card already created because you keep adding the item so always we will check okay is there any existing card already there card report dot find one and uh, we are just going to apply where close we have a restaurant id so restaurant id we are getting from the payload and we have the user id that we are getting from user.uid so if the existing cart is there right so here we are going to have the let items of menu item body dto it is initialized with empty array so there are two cases if existing cart is there that means we just need to add this new menu item inside our json object so what we will do is first let's get all the items which are there in the existing card existing card dot uh, menu items and then add this new menu item inside that add items dot push and whatever inside payload we have menu item object just push this and return await existing card dot save right because we got this items from the existing cart and here we need to put items dot save okay existing card dot menu item because payload dot menu item okay so here So we need to assign this because we are just updating the menu items items dot push item is actually a property so menu items existing card dot menu items equal to items so we do we need to do that menu items equal to the items and then existing card dot save else we are creating things from the fresh so items dot push we got the first menu item which we are adding so payload dot menu item payload dot menu item and then return await this dot card repo dot save and inside this you pass pay, the whole payload so what do we have first is the return await card repo dot save so i can have a user id which is user dot uid and then we have a restaurant id which we already have restaurant id and then menu items we already got these items okay so this is how you should be able to create a cart let's say if cart already exists and you keep adding the new menu items then i will first get all the existing menu items push the new menu items uh, I mean whatever you are passing in the body the menu item object push that object to the existing items array and then assign that and then just save it I mean I think it, it will work and then this is how we are doing the else part so this is all about save update menu item is uh, when you want to update the menu item object should we do the update so this is simple update i will just uh, because this is a crud operation we will go through it there are only a few methods we have so update menu items we are getting the uid okay update cart menu item so we are getting the restaurant id menu items payload so we are checking do we have existing cart if existing cart is not there we will return not found otherwise because what you are doing you are actually updating the the menu item payload let's say you added a particular uh, menu items now you wanted to update a particular property of that menu item so that you can do something like this 
so you are actually setting the new menu item object there and updated menu item we are going to assign to the menu items object and save it that's it so this is existing cart and you are just updating a menu item based on whatever the payload you are passing so here inside payload dot menu item this is the object you are passing so let's say you added a pani tikka or couple of items inside a cart and now you want to update the pani tikka content maybe somehow you want to update it this api will not be used frequently because you you won't be updating it either you will be removing it or adding a new menu item so we won't be using this update uh, cart menu item frequently then there is a delete api so what delete api will do is delete api will just remove or uh, that particular menu item from the cart so let's see if this cart exists then what we are doing is because we are removing a particular menu item from the cart not the the whole record you are deleting you are just removing okay i added a paneer tikka a paneer burji or omelette or some content inside the cart i wanted to just remove the ice cream right from the dish menu items so we are just going to delete only or remove that means we just need to remove the object from an array whose menu item id is this so we got the existing cart dot updated menu items and save it now there is a scenario where you might want to clear your cart also right clear cart means i just wanted to dump everything whatever is inside my cart in that case we can just do something like this cart repo dot find one and delete simple and finally this api we are going to use is list whatever is in there inside a cart so find one because i will have only single record per user inside a table so find one it will give us the whole record which rest with restaurant id and the menu item json object which contains an array of all the food menu items added inside it so this is a simple api we have created i mean i already have this crud operation so i'm just copy and pasted it this is the cart entity this is the food menu item json object we are going to maintain this is the cart dto controller services and inside domain module i will just add my controllers so this is cart entity cart entity and then we have cart controller cart service this is same domain module and then this domain module we are importing here so we got just another service running and here inside main.ts let's say this is going to run on 3007 port or 3006 we can just start uh, we can do just a simple start npm run start dev and let's see if uh, we got any error it's just a simple boilerplate service with the same thing so it's an error cannot access when you body item dt okay we need to move this thing on the top that's the only thing we will restart the application and it started right it just have api v1 cart and that is map with get put post delete okay so let's see the port is 3006 i think So you might be thinking why i'm not passing any id to update and delete the card because it's just a single record in the whole table for that user we don't need to pass the id so if you want to create a new card item you can at least play with this so we just need to authorize the apis so do we we need to get the token first so i will get okay i need to restart my front end to get the token so this is swiggy app and we run start so meanwhile let's see our apis card service okay we'll just rename it to the card service so this is the post what it is doing is you you can hit this post multiple times but it will check okay do you have an existing uh existing cart added items added in the cart then it will just uh 
append it this menu item it will just append it there for this restaurant id okay otherwise okay you might be adding a new card for the different restaurant id then it will it will check and it, if it is not there it will create a new one otherwise it will append this menu item to that card so we can just try this out and let's see it are we able to start our app Uh, the thing is we are running lots of things i need to see where is our front end app and you run start something is already running on port 3000 i think one of our services running on port 3000 so let's we can kill this So now we don't have anything running on 3000. I can start my front end app. Okay, and I just need to get a token so that I can play with this card APIs because these are the protected APIs. Login successful. Can copy this one. Copy your token and pass it to the authorize. And then let's see if I create uh, my cart. Okay, it's not running. Now I need to start my application, which is cart service npm run start dev. I mean these ports are a little bit confusing okay 3500 errors let's see invalid input type for uuid okay we need to change this entity so go to domain cart entity and you can see i think i added this as a uuid that is wrong it should be varchar because user id here is the firebase user id which is not a uuid So we have created this uh, simple card and let's say if I'm just adding a new menu item with the new ID uh, here we can also check for the ID because if you are adding the same menu item then we need to append it and increase the count you can see it's added inside a menu items array now you can you can just add it update it delete it all those things you can do let's say if I want to delete this particular item so I will just pass the same payload. It will just remove that element. And now we have only one item element. You can see it has removed that ID. The ID we have passed is 03. If we just pass 09, then we don't have anything inside a menu item. However, all the items added in the inside the cart is empty. And if you just want to clear out your simple card records you can delete it let's do the clear so what it will do is it will check your session user and it will just remove the items from the database now you don't have anything so you will you will get 404 so it's like a simple dump service not much i didn't put put much effort into this because it's not a really good service it's just to store some temporary metadata now we'll focus more on order service so once you add the items to the cart, you do the checkout and you start placing the order. So here we need to take uh, two things important here. First, whenever you do the checkout, we can create the order in the draft mode, order initiated, not order placed. Order will be placed once the payment is successful through the payment service. So we will just create a record here. This is your order ID, restaurant ID, dish ID, user ID, and then order status. So here is a status 
payment status order status means like if it is a uh, delivered means everything has happened the whole uh, flow has executed if it is just initiated that means user has just check out his card maybe going through the payment process cancelled that means he has odd order, order has been cancelled so we are going to build a simple state machine and this order service is going to now order service you are placing an order right so it also needs to have an or, uh, address id to which you want to put your uh, put your address to be delivered and then okay because this order id is going to be used by payment service to confirm so there is an asynchronous communication needs to happen because once you once your order service order is initiated the initial status will be draft but with this order id when you do the payment then we will update the status to payment submitted or payment successful and then we will just change this to order placed and once the order placed the delivery service will take this uh, event and then they will take care of okay order has been successful sorry the payment has been successful now order is really placed and then we this is the guy who need uh, this is the address and these are the menu items and this is the restaurant data this is the restaurant id these are the dish menu items we need to deliver to this address so this is asynchronous stuff going on so let's build the order service so order service is again a simple plain uh, service we are going to build because here what all different apis we need i may need to fetch all my orders so order history from a particular restaurant the whole past order history that what all i have ordered and it's like we are going to clone this json object because we have everything inside this json object okay what all items you have ordered on what price because prices might have changed so it's like a whole clone object it will it will not reference or it will not fetch the data from the real tables everything we have inside this json object okay these are the dish menu items the name price descriptions the count and this is the restaurant id you can fetch the restaurant detail from there okay and these are the dish menu items you have ordered and uh, this these are your status of your orders okay and the address to which you have delivered your orders so we need the order history and order create once you do the checkout we initiate we can initiate the order as created order is in order status is in draft or there are two two process either you uh, create order record with the status draft when you do the checkout or create the order record only once the payment is successful but i think we can just initiate the we can create order record with the status draft and once the payment is successful we will just toggle the status okay so we would know that user has actually uh, check out the items and doing the payment sometimes the payment might have been might be failing so we would know that user is trying to place the order and then there is asynchronous communication needs to happen between the order service and the payment service payment service will raise a event okay payment successful for this order id okay and this order you will get from here once you initiate the order and start doing the payment because payment will be initiated from the front end for a particular order id okay so it's going to be interesting so what we will do is i will create a order service from our existing stuff so we have cart service i think i can just use this service to rename it to the order service and all these we are building as a rest services order service and this is going to run on particular port so this is order api and let's say port is 5438 Okay, here inside Docker Compose file. What else we need to update inside main.ts? So uh, we need to change the port. Let's say 3008. Okay, and inside Docker Compose, we need to have another container for the Postgres because this is a different database. Postgres order. And inside Docker Compose YML, I will create an, another entry. This time the database is Postgres order. And here we are going to expose uh, 5438 port 
I think that is what we put in the env order service okay dot env this is 5438 order api so same we need to put in the docker compose override so this is order service order api order api testing and order api data this is for volume mapping we'll just put it here this is our docker compose yml we just update it for the order microservice and then we can do docker compose up again with the new containers now it, this would have a four container the order api is also has been created you can see order api testing and order api database created and this is exposing 38 port same port we are putting inside the dot env for this service 38 order api and now what is the the real use case of the order service is after this we need to build a payment service Here yeah, payment service and order service are uh, kind of have a communication. So once the order has been created and whenever user because order will be created, you will get the order ID on the front end and then you will do the initiation of payment through the one of the payment mode. Maybe we will just integrate with the Stripe. I think there is a Nest.js Stripe uh, already there. We just need to create account and then use this Nest.js Stripe. So doing the payment processing we are offboarding to uh, other stuff like uh, to external library that will take care of order has been executed order uh, i mean the payment has been done so once the payment is done this payment service will acknowledge just raise the event because you are doing the payment for this particular order and for this order i already know that these are the dish menu items and this is the payment amount which we will calculate Payment is of type number, what is the status, updated at, and this is the disk menu JSON object. Right, so and the payment mode, we don't need to worry about it. So it's going to have a similar table structure. So once you do the checkout, we will just do the order create. Okay, and we will just have this order status that's going to be enum, which has a draft here. You know, initiated failed cancelled order cancelled that means you need to refund the amount and you can cancel the order only within a particular time limit and then order placed that means you have done the payment order delivered that means you have placed an order delivery partner has delivered your order to your doorstep right these different status so we can build the order service so here i will just rename this to the order And then what we need to do, we just like a single uh, table service. So we'll just change this order controller, order DTO. So what I will do is I will do this offline. It's like the same entity. And I will think about the logic. Is there anything else needed to track our order? We just need to have a two more columns. Otherwise the structure is going to be the same. We are capturing the restaurant ID, the user ID who is placing the order and uh, the food menu JSON object, the, the total price you need to pay and your order status. So same properties we are going to have inside this. So this is order. This is going to have ID, user ID, restaurant ID, food menu item JSON object and order status which is going to be enum. So here let's have worker select true and then the payment and there are more attributes about the order service the payment currency mode and all for now this payment is of type int and this is of number okay this is not null because you need to pass the payment which you need to pay for the order and the status is also not null so status by default is uh, default is draft can i pass it draft okay default not null restaurant id user id restaurant id is uuid user id is worker because it is a firebase user id which is simply a string i think it's a cuid not uuid maybe 
okay this is the menu item json object same json object which you have which you have inside the cart because same menu item json object will be used in the order service okay you are paying for these menu items and this is the price total so we can also do the validation in the back end that these are the this menu items and this is the price total i mean we are not doing that much complex calculations but we can we can just pass this whole cart object to the the restaurant service and we can get the real time because you you might be dumping any random json from the front end that that won't be possible we will be validating the price total and all and then only we would allow you to create the order okay so then we will just create order controller to create the order change the status and all and the order service and then we will add it to the domain module so that's it about uh, this particular service i will just create uh, some apis so apis you can see i i can just fetch the order history based on the restaurant id we will just fetch all of your records and then uh, you can get your current order status by just passing the order id right sometimes you you don't know okay what is your order status it, is it cancelled payment successful failed or it is just in the draft mode which is your current order which you can see on the ui